Hello, Yellows, and welcome back to a TNC opposition preview. Apologies, I've been skiving definitely in Great Yarmouth. Last time out, it was a 3-2 loss away at Old Trafford versus, of course, one of the greedy six, Manchester United. Up next, it's time to see whether we've got what it takes to beat Newcastle United at Carrow. And who better to give us all the latest insight on the Geordie boys than huge Newcastle fan Chris Wallace of Newcastle fan channel, Gallowgate Shots. Chris, thanks so much for coming on. How are you doing? It's no problem, mate. Um, I'm, like I said before, start recording, mate. I'm on cloud nine at the minute. So obviously, yesterday we get that great result <laughs> at, at home. Um, it's, mate, the atmosphere at St James's Park now. It's, it's one of those things where, you, where you, you look forward to going to the games, and, and I, I can sympathise with, with you and, and the fans of Norwich at the moment because it gets to the point where you feel as if it's more of a chore going to the games. You've got a season ticket, and you think, oh, I'm going to the match today. But it, it switched round now at Newcastle, and it, it's going well, mate. It's, it's going well. How was yourself? Uh, well, um, sick with jealousy that you've got that feeling. Um, it's it's a little bit more encouraging now. The the lads are um, at least putting in a, a what I would describe as a solid battle. But that's the bare minimum, isn't it? And mm. it's funny that you should bring that up, Chris, because last time we had Kristen, and um, of course Newcastle fan on the channel, he was saying. Um, the mood was absolutely woeful. And last time we spoke before that, that one, one, of course, which we'll speak about in a minute. Yeah. It was what he was basically saying that Newcastle were dead and buried. If you didn't mm -hmm. get a result against Norwich, you were buggered. Do you agree with that? And like, what's the contrast? Because it almost seems as if before that game, if Norwich had beaten you, we had the opportunity to actually really press on. But that one, one, it almost just epitomized the Norwich season. We've just sort of split yeah. Since. Do, would you agree with that? How's it been for you since that game? Um, you're probably right what you're saying. Uh, I think a lot of fans thought Newcastle would be destined to get relegated and, and they had to do a lot of work in January when the transfer window came around. And, and a lot of fans were thinking, right, we'll just make it until January, then see what happens afterwards. But the, the results just weren't going our way at that point. Um since Eddie Howes came in, that's when you've seen the difference. I know I've just spoke about January transfer window, mm. but Eddie Howe coming into that football team and getting a few games under his belt, it's not just the new signings which are, are performing well. It's the lads that were struggling under Steve Bruce. And you've seen a huge change around from, from those players. Like, prime example, Joe Linton. And, and it's thanks to, yes. to Kieran yes. Clark who got sent off in that game against Norwich in the ninth <laughs> minute where Joe Linton had to drop into to midfield. And since that game, he, he hasn't he hasn't even looked like losing his place in midfield. It's it's phenomenal, the turnaround that we're seeing from that player. And he, he's the first name, name on the team sheet now. And it, it's, it's thanks to that Norwich game and what happened in that game. But you're right what you're saying, mate. Everybody thought we, we were we were gone. We, we would have been down there. But it, it's took a while. It has took a while. But I feel as if now we're, we're looking forward rather than over our shoulders in that relegation battle. Well, Chris, considering um, how you're doing financially now, we'll send you the invoice in the post for, for that. Uh, and uh, <laughs> your email, can we set one up? You already cost 40 million, mate. We don't need to pay anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, no, and I was going to say, that that's a really good point, actually, because you sort of, I, I guess you've already answered that question. I was going to ask you, like, what's what's been the reason why it's worked? Because you, you I, in my opinion, you didn't have that new manager bounce. It's almost been slow, and I think that Newcastle fans have had to be patient, but it's very difficult to be patient with all of that, that, that money that I know it wasn't injected in instantly, but was at least promised and the expectation mm. goes up. But it, is it purely down to Eddie Howe managing to get more out of those struggling players for that slow but sure progression to to where you are on the table now, it's it's been a hard job for Eddie Howe to try and get that losing mentality out of those players because yeah. they were just used to losing games and throwing games away and underperforming. The lads weren't even going into training over half the week. They were, they were going to training three times a week, and for a Premier League football team, that is diabolical when you think about it. We would lose a game, then they would get the next two games off. Yeah, sorry, the next two days off. Mm. Steve Bruce wouldn't have them in there working on obviously the, the flaws from the last game that the errors that were made and, and how to go into the next game that's changed under Eddie Howe and you get players like Ryan Fraser who's injured at the moment he comes out, out after a game and he, he'll fully admit he'll say the trainer wasn't good enough and, and that's one of the big reasons why 
we are, we are performing the way we are at the moment. But yes, January's helped a lot. It really has. A lot of people were were mocking Newcastle about the money which was spent and the players that were brought in. But I feel as if as a club was spent wisely when a lot of teams didn't want to do business with Newcastle because yeah. they just didn't want to sell the players. Them a prime example, Jesse Lingard with Man United. They just didn't want him to, to leave, even though Newcastle were already there, willing to, to bring him in on loan, even buy him at one point. But they just didn't want him to, to come to Newcastle. We were laughed at when we, we bought Chris Wood in for £25 million. Pound it worked out. But once again, nobody wanted to do business with Newcastle. So we realised that we had a... a you relegate, I'm sorry to interrupt you, mate. And basically, by that, you relegated Burnley. 100%. Weekend, weekend you, Burnley. You, re- yeah. you, know you relegated them, mate. Honestly, 100%. That move finished them because yeah. that was the talisman up front. And that's when Chris Wood arrived in that, that team, we went on that nine game unbeaten run. So Didn't score go. a goal, but he was he was a, a, a key figure in that run because yes he was doing all the dirty work which goes unnoticed at times from fans looking from the outside in with other clubs but if that's your player you think he's done really well there yes he hasn't grabbed a goal but he's one of the reasons that we've climbed up that table no honestly mate fair play and i i agree with all your observations you'll have to forgive me i am just jealous because you've just become so much more of a team there's so much more spirit about newcastle now and like the bit, and I know that the, all the Norwich fans, obviously watching and listening to this around the world now, they'll be kicking themselves because that result against you boys at St James's Park, which we will talk about in a minute, it just sort of epitomised where where we are at and how and what we could have been because you've developed into such a difficult team to beat, um, and you've just slowly but surely plucked away and, and got results. And I wrote off Eddie Howe. I mean, honestly, I. I I think I've maybe misjudged Eddie Howe. I, I think I, I thought he was overrated, but he's proving his worth and and fair bloom and play to him. So so Chris, you're known as the Toon Army, but I, I think it might be a case of on the beach Barmy Army now. Would you, would you agree with that? Nah, completely disagree. Completely disagree. I, I think if you look at the Spurs game where we got absolutely battered by Spurs five one, I think it ended up. Um, you could probably argue that the lads looked like they had gave up. But it, it's far from that. I think the, the position that a lot of these players will find themselves in now is that if you don't perform, we'll replace you in the summer. Yes. And I think that's the 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 the, the, um, the best thing about, about what's happening with Newcastle at the moment. If you're not pulling your weight, you'll just get replaced. And, and you're yeah. seeing it from John Joe Shelby, prime example. God knows how many Newcastle United fans wrote him off before Eddie Howe came in. Eddie Howe came in once again. That's another player which he's changed. Fabian Shaw, he's a complete different player. Emil Kraft at right back. There's so many of them that are fighting for that position now. So I feel as if Newcastle, as, as a team, and like you mentioned there, the, the, the bond in that team now is phenomenal. You, you can see it. Every single player is fighting for each other. And I think we'll go right to that last game of the season, playing for foot. For, Playing for the careers, really, at the end of the day. Yeah, fair play. And do you know what? I hadn't even thought about that, Chris. And it's such a good point. And one of the things, one of the players that's just come into my head, I don't know why I didn't write this down before we started. But speaking of of players, of course, we sold you Jamal Lewis. What's mm. the latest on Jamal? Because for me, um, st- still just one of the nicest people and players I've ever met. Um, met him in the street a couple of times in Norwich and just such a nice bloke. How is he doing on the pitch at Newcastle now? Well, he, he's not even in the 23-man squad. 25-man squad okay. didn't make it. Um, when when you, you re-submit your team in January, yeah. didn't make the cut. Um, he, he was left out. Apparently, he was offered to go out on loan. I can't remember who to. I want to say Birmingham. Okay. Um, and he refused, allegedly refused to go out on loan. Okay. Um, so he hasn't featured as much. The, the times which I've seen him, he had a bit of a roby start at Newcastle. Um, yeah. But the last couple of games I remember him playing, he, he was doing a lot better. He really was. And I think a lot of Newcastle fans thought it was a bit harsh to leave him out of that squad. Mm-hmm. But we brought Matt Target in uh, from Villa. And, he's a, and he's a he player. Paul Dummett as well at left back, who's experienced players, and you probably need experienced players in the position that we found ourselves in. Yeah. We don't really have the luxury of, of bringing a, a young lad into that team, really, especially in that sort of key role and position. So 
I, I don't know what the future holds for. I, I don't think he'll be a Newcastle player come the summer. I really don't. Interesting. To be honest with you, I had no idea that he wasn't even in the 23. So um, thanks for sharing that. It's a shame. So three players, three players from Newcastle I got left out, and, and three surprising ones were were Lewis, uh, Kieran Clark. Yeah. Who, who obviously got sent off against Norwich in the, the, the reverse fixture. And Isaac Hayden. Uh, but Isaac Hayden's got a long term injury. Uh, so right. he apparently yeah. wasn't going to be fit for the yeah. rest of the season. So he was left out. But yeah, did, didn't even make the cut. Well, it, it, well, it makes sense, a couple of those lads. But, you know, Jamal, the surprise. But I think, I think Jamal is almost a victim of, of the fact that you guys were doing, I'm sure you would agree, to be honest, you were doing so bad with him. That it's almost just like, and I know it's not his fault, right? But. Unfortunately, as you've said, I think it's fair to say, you know, you needed experience and yeah. it's a shame for Jamal, but I wish him all the best to really do. Because as I say, he's definitely one of the nicest players I've ever met. Um, Chris, um, last game for you. I know you're you're up against Palace by the time this goes out. You're probably going to play them and people watch this. But I really want to home in on that amazing win for you guys against Leicester at home. A, a last gasp winner. We were talking about it off air before we started. Those are the games you love as a fan, right? There's n- there's no other feeling. Um, the, the the game the second half, um, Newcastle had took the, the the foot off the gas really, and we're just coasting them by. Leicester had X amount of possession, ridiculous amount of possession. I think it was nearly seventy percent at one point. Wow! But they they were on the tack in the I think it was the ninety third minute or something like that. Then my target who had just been speaking about picks a ball up on the byline, balls about to go out for a goal kick, and he thinks, now nah, we'll we'll take it up the field. Passes it to to Joe Willock. He just runs the full length of what felt like the the full field. Deflection, Bruno, ninety fifth minute goal. There's there's no better feeling, and yeah. it's times like that you're inside the stadium and you're thinking this. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now when when that that ball hits the back of the net. Mate, I'm, I I miss that feeling. I'm good, let's talk about <laughs> I miss that feeling too much. Um, so, so on that note, and I guess to start to to talk about our, our fixture now, Chris, uh, this weekend, what will what will Eddie Howe and those Newcastle boys bring into our game off the back of that? Like, I, I obviously the confidence will be up, um, but performance wise, what do you think the Newcastle boys will be able to bring from that result into our game on Saturday? It's confidence. Um, the, the, the more games that you win and the, the more confident you're going to be uh, at the end of the day. Obviously, we'll, we'll still have this this uh, game on Wednesday against Palace to come, which is another uh, home game for Newcastle, which will be our third home game in a row. And before we start recording, Newcastle are five consecutive home wins on the bounce. So it could be six by the time it goes in, in into the, the, the game at Carroll Road. And it's you, you'll notice a different team, you will, for, from what you witnessed at St. James's Park, complete different team. You've got three, four new additions in there, that which will probably start. Apparently, Kieran Trippier might actually be fit to play against Norwich as well. But saying that, I don't think they'll risk him. Um, Emil right. Kraft's that right back, and I, I don't think they're going to risk Chris, uh, with Kieran Trippier with the, the position at the moment. Just give him a day off, mate. Just give him a day yeah. off. Yeah, we'll, we'll risk him. We'll <laughs> risk him. But you, you'll 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 see a, a team that will fight till the end. And, and like you mentioned, you saw it against Le- Leicester at the weekend. So so you'll see a team that that are mm. ready to go till the final yeah. whistle. And 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 is there a way that that Nor? I mean, I'm not sure if there is, but maybe there is. Is there a way that you think Norwich can beat Newcastle on Saturday? Is there a weak link in your side that we can try and get through? I would like to be less biased on this one, but from what I've witnessed, no. if you asked me this question X amount of months ago, three months ago, then I'll give you a list. I really would. I would yeah. give you a list of all the different positions that you can hurt Newcastle. But right now... I can't say anything. I, I really can't. The, the team is solid. It, it really is solid at the moment, especially that midfield trio of Shelby, Bruno and Joe Linton. And even if one of those drops out, Joe Weather comes into it. You've got Sean Longstaff waiting to go into that midfield as well. And defence, uh, to be fair, I said the same thing when we played Spurs and Spurs went and scored five past where they really did. Yeah. But I, I was that, that was a bad day at the office for everybody involved at the club. I, I, I can't. Honestly, I, I would love to give you... <laughs> I, I really would, but the, the performances which I'm seeing at the moment, the, there's nobody that isn't pulling their weight, and there's nobody that's underperforming in that team whatsoever. 
fair bloom and play, fair bloom and play. And you, you've mentioned a few of the lads, so we, we probably don't need to, to speak about them in uh, too much length. But I always ask opposition fans, who are your most informed? And, and is it those midfield three that are really making Newcastle tick at the moment? 100%. It really is. Um, even you've got defence as well, and you've got Fabian Scher in defence, but you've got Dan Byrne, who were brought from Brighton, brought him back home to Newcastle, local lad, just lives a few miles outside the city centre. And and the performances and the link-up that you're getting from those two is is through the roof. It, it's phenomenal. Um, but, but like you said there, the, the midfield three, as, as a Newcastle fan over the seasons, and I'm, I'm talking about four or five seasons since we came up from the championship, along with yourselves, I think we came up that year, the midfield never really changed. It was John Joe Shelby, Isaac Hayden in yeah. midfield. And now you've brought new players into that mix and, and the dynamics of the, that midfield area has changed. One of the weak positions, and, and you, you probably, uh, right now, I'd probably say one of the wings. You, you've got Alan St. Maximum on one wing and you'll probably have Almiron, I would say, on the other yeah. wing when it comes to, to playing Norwich. Ryan Fraser picked up an injury couple of games back now so so i'll think he'll be missing the game but alan saint maxim is one of those players I, i'm sitting here saying he's out of form but he's still quite good when he's out of form <laughs> so if if he has a day where he, where he fancies it then he, he could be man of the match performances but at the same time he, he could be that type of player where he just just looks like he can't yeah. be bad to be fair but <sighs> It's it's me. I, I'm I'm smiling, and I know I'm smiling throughout this. But it's it's been a long time since I've done one of these things, and looked forward to a game. Oh. It, it really has. <laughs> it's been a long time since I remember having a good game, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris, I want to. I actually want to. Before we talk about this this game coming up in in, in more detail, what you expect, etc. I actually want to ask you for your um for your honest opinion. Um, on on Norwich City, based on what you saw at St James's Park, of course that 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 one one result, um, you guys had a red card really early doors, and we were celebrating, rubbing our hands together. Well, finally, yeah. we've got a bit of luck. You know, we can really go on and and win this game. Absolutely outrageous. Again, I don't know what it is about Team Pukki versus Newcastle. He always scores amazing goals against you. I say always, he scored two, I think, or maybe it's three. Um, Great volley, but ultimately ended up in a 1-1 draw. What was your honest opinions about Norwich City in that game? And to be honest with you, in general, what are your opinions on us as an outfit this season? I, I think Norwich is one of those teams where you'll you'll make your list at the start of the season. You think, right, you need to be picking three points, at least four points for, from those teams. And, and teams will probably look at Newcastle and said exactly the same going into the start of the season. That, that's no disrespect to, to Norwich. And you'll probably realise the same. A lot of the, the teams will probably think um, there, there's three points. We should be getting at least X amount of points from these fixtures. And I think when you you underperform, like we did at St. James's Park, at Dane, like you said at the very start of this, you think oh, maybe this is us in this relegation fight for the rest of the season. And once again, it's, it's no disrespect, but it's, it's any team that's coming up from the championship. You, you're probably looking at them. We'll say the same about Brentford. And Brentford <laughs> bullied us. In, in games that, that we play them yeah. this season. Um, but like we were mentioning before we went on air there, that I, I've I've got a, a strong link with Norwich. I always want to see Norwich do well. I really do. Um, me, me best mate, yeah, well, me, me best mate lives in Norwich. He, he's, a, he's a huge Sunderland fan, mine, but me best mate lives in Norwich. So, how's, he, how's he your best mate and a Sunderland fan? I live in a town called South Shields, which is right in between Newcastle and Sunderland. Oh, so it's yeah, split yeah. right down the middle. Okay. Um, best mates going through school. So he, he went and supported Sunderland. I, I obviously support Newcastle uh, and obviously just been best mates ever since. Um, I was actually his best man at his wedding as well, which ended up on the playoff final day where Sunderland lost to Charlton, which was amazing. I'll oh. tell you that. <laughs> that. That was in Norwich. Um, yeah, but yeah, sea. I've... <laughs> the, the, one of the lads that, that I do the podcast with, uh, Bestie as well, he, he loves Norwich. It's, oh, okay. I think his, his wife is actually from um, Norfolk area as well. So we've got good links. And, and I just like Norwich as a football club. I, I really do. Um, we've all had decent links with him. Tim Kroll currently playing at, at Norwich he, as well. And I, I, I love Timmy. What a man Timmy Kroll is. Oh, he's, he's great. He's a great bloke. He really is. Um, there's a story about Tim Kroll when he was playing in... in the youth team coming through into the senior squad, he was still getting public transport at training, which blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Um, but 
Tim Crowley, he'll always be a fan favourite at, at Newcastle. And I don't, it's just one of those teams, and, and there'll be a lot of fans out there from, from opposition ones that will... There's always that one team that has a soft spot. You will have a soft spot. And Norwich is that, that for me. So I, I think when Norwich get promoted in the Premier League... You, you always expect them to probably get relegated because it's your typical yo-yo team. Probably yeah. too good for the championship. Probably just don't invest enough to stay in yeah. the Premier League. And it, it's a shame. It, it really is. Um, it's. I, I wish Norwich all the luck for the future, but I think the more this keep happening, the more of a struggle it'll be to get back in the mm-hmm. Premier League because you, you've seen the championship at the moment. I think there's 14 teams playing for the playoff positions yeah. at the minute. And... It's, I, I just wish they invested that a little bit more. I really do. May and and in the right way as well. Because yeah. that's the thing with Norwich this season is to to counter. By the way, thank you for the compliments on Norwich. Thank you for sharing that story about Tim Cruel. Absolute legend for us as well. The the thing with Norwich is right, is that we've spent we spent 50 million quid, probably more actually, one of the highest um clubs in terms of like what we paid for agent fees as well. We got robbed by yeah. agents this summer, hundred percent. Um but we actually spent, I think it ended up being the 13th or 14th most in Europe, would you believe? Yeah. 50 million quid mm. and we still um, didn't land. But, you, I mean, we're in different stratospheres now, Chris. I mean, I, I, I've i said I've said this time and time again. I think we are now at a point where it's all, I mean, fair play to Brentford. I hate saying it, but it's going to be, I think Brentford might be the last club being promoted from the champ that can actually stay in the Premier League because I, th- I think this was the last chance because I think the money gap is going to be way too big. Yeah. Now. But we won't we won't go into that now. Um, let's talk about the the game coming up. What sort of performance are you expecting, Chris? Are you expecting a really comfortable performance from Newcastle? Do you think you'll dominate the game at Carrow Road? Uh, not at all. I, I, I don't think we'll dominate it. I, I don't think we've, we've gone into any t- uh, any game and, and dominated the game as such. Um, I, I think what you'll get from Newcastle, Newcastle will have a, a decent spell, but we'll also have a spell where we'll happily give the opposition the ball and say, right, break us down, because teams have struggled to do that against Newcastle. Like we mentioned, the Leicester game, they've nearly had 70% possession. They've had two shots on target the full game. It, it just shows you how well Newcastle are off the ball. Mm. Well then, for for you, the home crowd, home crowd always works in, in in your favor as long as you don't concede early on. That you've you've always got that chance, and you, you saw it against Burnley uh, when, when you got the yeah the result against Burnley, which was a huge shock. I, I wasn't expecting that, but it's it's that home crowd. It really is, and, yeah. and when the home crowd is giving the players that extra 20 percent, then the will they'll overperform at times and. I don't think it'll be an easy game for Newcastle whatsoever. I'll probably take a draw now if you offered that to me right now. Really? Yeah, 100%. But do you know what, Chris? It's interesting you bring up the fat, the fans' point, right? And I'm so pleased you've said this because this has been my bugbear all season. Our home atmosphere has been shocking, absolutely shocking. And I know that the performances on the pitch need to get the fans up. I get that. Um, but the fans have been so flat. And I'm not saying that's the reason why Norwich have been poor, but... We really need to work on that. And what worries me, and actually I'm going to disagree with you here, Chris, I think we've completely lost what you've said there. That home edge, I think we've lost mm. it. Even against, but I, I genuinely think our home support is at the point where we have to try something different now because it's been so woeful this season. And how many Geordies are coming down to the to the game, Chris? It's a it's sellout. A, it's, it? it's a sellout from Newcastle. So no, isn't it? It's, I, it's, I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head, but you, you would be expecting around with 3,000 plus easy. It'll be basically it'll be it'll be half the the south stand, which is mm. so, and the, and the Geordie boys will be well up for it. So, um, Chris, I will stop moaning about Norwich City Football Club now, and I'll ask you the the question of all questions. We do it a little bit differently on TNC. We ask you score prediction, but what is your head saying, and what is your heart saying? Um, heart always going to go for a Newcastle United win. It's always going to be a Newcastle United win, and, and I, I would like to see a comfortable win. I really would because we haven't had it this season. We really haven't. Um, so I would like to see a comfortable win of not necessarily dominating bad ideas, but but I would take 2-3-0 uh, as a comfortable win. Okay. Um, control possession and just pass up, just just pass play, just 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 constantly keep the ball rolling. That That's what I want to see from Newcastle. Yeah. Head, honestly, like I said, I would take 1-1. Really? I think, I yeah. Be- 
negative uh, return great well, ball. This, ball. This, this is the thing this this is that this false attitude that people have towards newcastle fans newcastle fans think they're going to win the world they think they're going to challenge for europe next season we don't <laughs> we really don't we're, we're just happy with the position that we're in right now and we'll take any point that that's obviously given handed our way we'll, we'll take it if, if you're not on the, the end of a defeat at this point of the season that then you're laughing in the position where newcastle are right now the key is now and once again we might go into that palace game and get all three points and i think that might guarantee us safety at that point depending on the rest of the fixtures which means newcastle going into that game with nothing to play for as such apart from players contracts it, it really does but once again it could be a case where we might go into that game comfortable nothing to play for once again and the players have got that that intense pressure off the back to be like right you have to get points you have to and it might be a more relaxed performance which could work either way but i'll, I'll take a draw all day long i really would it, it's points on the board at the end of the day so okay. so you'll take a draw okay so your heart says three nil your head says one one my head is saying that this will be a two or three one loss um i think that the the confidence of you boys at the moment the the football that you're playing um I think we put a lot into that United away game. Unfortunately, you know, an, another example of Norwich's season, we should have got mm. points in that game and uh, would have done us a hell of a lot of good getting a, at least a draw out of that game. We should have won it, to be fair, but, you know, at least a draw out of that game. So I think my head is saying this is a 2-3-1 or three, one loss. I think it's paper over cracks. My, my, my heart mm. is saying a draw. I, I, th I think maybe we might be able to get something, as I've said. I think I'm alluding to you a little bit is on is on the beach FC. Um, so, mate, Chris, thanks so much for coming on the channel today. I, I really appreciate your time. It's no problem, mate. It's always a pleasure to, to have a chat. It really is. And if it gives me the opportunity to, to wax lyrical about Newcastle and, and keep this smile on my face, I'm, I'm always happy to do stuff like this. Chris, where can uh, where can people find you? So, as soon as you've said some lovely, kind things about Norwich, where can people find you? Uh, you can find us on Twitter, Gallagher Shots. Uh, also, search for Gallagher Shots on YouTube. We'll have umpteen amount of videos going out on a weekly basis. It's obviously all about Newcastle United, looking back over um, fixtures that have just gone by, fixtures which are coming up, as, as well as going seasons yeah. back. We've got a number of shows which go out. And, and, and yeah, that, that's it, really. But an interesting one to follow because your ascendancy now is going to be a sharp one. It's certainly going to be hockey stick. So, Chris, thank you so much once again. Thank you so much to all of you TNC fans, Norwich City fans. If you've subscribed, if you've somehow not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you've enjoyed this YouTube video, give it a thumbs up and get involved in the conversation. We are at Talk Norwich City on social media. Without further ado, fingers crossed the next time I speak to you, lovely lot, will be after a gigantic win at home to Newcastle on the Bull City.